can see you're dying to find out what's inside. You can lift your lids now. Oh, Ooh. wow. Gold ingredients. Everything that is, is cool. golden. Gold mustard. What? Wow. Oh, my God, it's so pretty. Golden beetroots. That's so cool. Golden, golden, golden. It's actually a really tough box. We're seeing a bit of a theme here, golden ingredients. So, what do we have? Golden raisins, golden Swiss chard, golden beetroots, a beautiful golden trout, golden syrup, gold leaf, golden delicious apples, and there's some golden mustard. Everything you need to make a beautiful dish and help you go for gold. Your time starts now. Go, Popo. Go, Popo. I think the Golden Mystery Box is beautiful. It's exciting. I think every girl loves gold. I love gold. Every single cake I make has gold on it, so I love seeing that gold leaf. I'm going to use some of the golden syrup, the sultanas, the gold and the apples. Callum here. Thanks, buddy. Oh, gosh. Always feel frantic in the pressure of this MasterChef kitchen. Seeing the trophy there doesn't just represent a bit of silverware to put in the pool room. It represents winning the toughest cooking competition Australia has ever seen. And that, to me, is something pretty special. It's an interesting box, actually. For me, beetroot and apple is a really great combination, regardless of whether it's sweet or savoury. So I'm going to do um, a golden beetroot ice cream. I'm going to do a little apple and beetroot granita. And I'm going to try and make a little frozen mousse as well. So nice, kind of cold, refreshing sort of dessert. It was only a couple of weeks ago in Elimination Challenge where I made a beetroot parfait and the judges didn't like it. As a whole, it lacked acidity. The opportunity to have those ingredients again and nail it this time is too good to give up. It's only the best cooks left, so there is no room for error has to be perfect if I'm going to win one of those top four spots. So I've got to get motoring because I've got a couple of frozen elements and if I don't get them in soon, they're just simply not going to freeze in time. This is your golden ticket to immunity. 18 minutes to go. Come on, guys. Yeah. Come on. I, uh, I'm hoping this is the top four dish. I think it's going to be a really good dish. I just am worried about whatever else is doing. <laughs> The dish I'm cooking today is a golden beetroot ice cream with beetroot leaf granita and an apple and golden syrup mousse. This is my second go at making a beautiful dessert with beetroot as the hero. So I've got my beetroot ice cream churning away, my granitas in the freezer. The theme of today's mystery box is gold, so I'm going to add another little element here. I'm making it gold leaf praline. Once my caramel is set, I break it up, blend it to a fine powder, and dust it in a really fine layer onto a baking tray into a circular shape. I'm going to add the gold leaf later on to kind of garnish the top of the dish. Gold leaf is something that I would never use in my normal life, but I want to stand out from the pack and be in that top four, so I would really love to knock it out of the park today. Come on! This is stressful. This is it, guys! Ten seconds! Nine! Oh, my God. Two, one, action! Oh, well done. Well done, brother. That was crazy. Holy crap. It was a bit full on. Oh, look at you go. Very different. So let's get the first dish in, and that belongs to you, Callum. If the judges don't like this dish today, it'd be a big knock to my confidence, because if you try and correct something and then you still stuff it up again, not a good look at this stage in the competition. Callum, what do we got, mate? So it's a golden beetroot ice cream, beetroot leaf and apple granita, apple mousse, and a golden praline. This isn't your first rodeo on the beetroot ice cream. Yeah, I did one a couple of weeks ago, so the chance to have another crack at a beetroot ice cream was too good to give up. <laughs> Let's eat it. <laughs>
you sought to redo something that you weren't super happy with, and I love that pursuit of perfection. Because the consistency of the ice cream is silky, silky smooth, you know, beautiful. I really loved the golden crisp on top. I'm glad you managed to have time to put it in there because I think it added a lovely element. You're making a serious play for a top four dish, and I think you are very, very close. Thanks, Mel. Well done, mate. Yeah, well done. Well done, Cal. Thank you, guys. Well done, Cal. Good one, Cal. So, question time. What could be under that lid? You ready to find out? Yes, yeah, please. let's do it. Okay, lift your lid. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yep, that is right. It's a Rubik's Cube. Do we have to do it? I'm used to lifting up the mystery box and there being beautiful ingredients underneath it, but today's a Rubik's Cube. No clue what this is about. There's six colours on a standard Rubik's Cube. Blue, red, yellow. White, green, and orange. What you gotta do is choose one colour and use that for inspo for your dish. I'm an artist, so I'm definitely inspired by colour. But also, I really love this because we really have to be creative to win this challenge. What does using a colour as inspiration actually mean? It could be as simple as doing Reynolds an orange dessert for the colour orange. Or it could be something more literal. You're using the colour blue to inspire a dish that comes from the ocean. Your time starts now. Come on. Where's coconut? Should coconut? I love this challenge because it doesn't have to be literal. Like, blue can represent something that comes from the sea. Maybe green is just a memory of a holiday that you had. It's open for interpretation, which I really love. What are you making, Ooh. Po? Do some, I'm making curry. Oh, nice. Akure. What? Akure. Red for chilli? Yes. Yeah, beautiful. I'm inspired by red today and I'm going to make a few dishes. I'm going to make a little Malaysian feast. I'm going to do a very, very traditional nyonya chicken curry. I've got my white bait frying, my rice is cooking and my roti dough resting and now I have to get onto my curry. It's a highly aromatic curry and it's got quite a lot of spices in it. I'm feeling really happy about this dish because I'm in my comfort zone and it completely represents me and the way I grew up. My journey with my cultural cuisine actually started in MasterChef season one. I realised I had let go of so much of my culture trying to assimilate as a migrant kid that I had to find that thing that reconnected me again and food became that thing. Hey, Po. Hey. It smells like my mum's kitchen in uh, here. This is very, very special. Obviously, you've chosen red as your concept colour. How quickly did you form this idea and say, that's what I'm doing? Really quickly. Was I it just... because of how well your dish was received? Received yesterday, you know? for sure. It was such a comfortable cook for me. And you know what? No one knows Malaysian. Like, we need to get this in the foreground of Australian. Absolutely. Like, I yeah. agree wholeheartedly. Melissa and I have had very similar upbringings and there's no doubt that food plays such a huge part of growing up in that part of the world. It's more curry leaves. I love that we share this story, so it's nice that I can give her a piece of that today. With 30 minutes to go, the sauce is cooked out beautifully and balanced. And now I have to slice up my chicken and just pop it into the sauce and let all that beautiful sweetness leach out of the meat. I'm actually just going to chuck the whole frame in there to flavour the curry. I just feel really good today. I feel like this is such a unique thing that I have to offer that I really hope that the love and the story that it tells will also punch across as well as the flavours. Oh, that smells amazing. Oh, really? Oh, my God. Today we're looking for flavour in full technicolour. 30 minutes to go! Thanks, 
to the collapse, guys. <laughs> Oil the bench. That was very, very stupid of me. My first lot of roti hasn't worked, and I have to start a new one. I have to make this work. I quickly grease down my bench and start stretching my second lot of dough. Okay, I think I'm okay. Is it hot enough? Oh no. Wasn't on. I know I need at least five minutes. So this is just not going to be as crispy as I want it to be. I need a spatula. But I just cross every part of my body. Um, oh my god, I look so manic. Here we go, guys. Come on. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And that's it. All right, Paul. What's the dish? It's the colour that I chose was red because chilli is so at the centre of so much of Malaysian cuisine. What I've made is a nyonya chicken curry, a nasi ulam, which is a herbed rice, fried fresh white bait with a red onion and chilli relish, and roti. I'm just going to preempt by saying the roti definitely isn't to my level of caramelisation, so I apologise for that. I ran out of time. We could be here a while. <laughs> I'll start with the rice. The pimped out rice is absolutely all time. Your little fried white bait relish number, it just provides this little entree and quite on the sweet side. So then when you do get to the curry, it's really floral. It is very, very amazing. That just needed another yeah. minute, and you've got a perfect roti yeah. bread to go with your perfect plate of food. Well done, Per. Thank you. Crunchy fish, pickly, sweet soy, chilli, deliciousness going on in there. And then you go in and you start eating the curry, and for me, a hallmark of a great curry is how good the potatoes are. Because the potato absorbs the true flavour of a curry. Your potatoes were stunning. Paul, you have smashed us out of the park. I'll forgive your 30-second demeanor on your roti. It was brilliant. Well done. If you come from Southeast Asia, it's a taste of home. If you come from somewhere else, it's a taste of soul and history and heart. And that's what we love about your food. For me, the rice is full of, you know, shrimpy goodness in there and it's sort of tossed through with the chilli and the coconut and all of those sort of elements that give the rice texture. And then we get to the heart and the soul of the dish, which is the curry. The chicken is tender. The balance of flavour and the depth of flavour you've managed to achieve in 75 minutes is impressive. I mean, I think you've done an incredible job honouring your heritage. I think it's really special. And I'm really proud to eat food like this. I'm actually crying with joy. That doesn't happen very often, but yeah. Oh, Mel. Thank you so much. Thanks, Pat. The Mystery Box is about two things. It's not just about showing your creativity. It's also about showing your knowledge. And when you lift those lids, you'll find ingredients under there usually that are pretty familiar. Sometimes they're a little bit exotic. Today, they are a lot more exotic. Let's not muck around. Lift your lids. 
What the heck? Wow. Well, welcome to what we like to call the ugly box. And we need you to look at these ingredients that on the surface look pretty ropey and find their inner beauty. Because you have got some absolutely cracking ingredients here. Look, take this fella, the monkfish. It is so ugly, it has to live down in the deep where it's dark so no one sees it. Morels, mushrooms, soaked and dried. A Morton Bay bug, very similar to a Balmain bug. I think the best seafood in the world. The flesh in the tail is absolutely the sweetest seafood you can get. This is the ugliest vegetable in the world, the celeriac. Buddha's hand, zest is great for this, it's a citrus. Chicken livers look weird, taste delicious. Blue cheese, nice and stinky with a bit of blue in it. And finally, this amazing fruit. This is a horn melon. If you were a bushman in the Kalahari in the dry season, you'd rip these open and you'd use them instead of water. Inside this orange spiky flesh, there are kind of seeds that are halfway between a passion fruit and a cucumber. And the flavor is kind of cucumber, banana-y. The flavor's in the gel around the seeds. So I think almost treated like passion fruit. You're pumped? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you want to be one of the top three? Yes, yes sir. George. Well, what are you waiting for? Start cooking! I guess not everyone's going to recognise everything that's in this box, but I'm happy that I, I know what everything is, at least. I'm hoping to give the judges something a little bit unexpected today. I want them to have sort of all of these little flavour and textural pops. I'm just slicing up the horn melon. It's got some beautiful seeds inside, so I want to see if I can dehydrate some and see if that changes the texture at all. Sometimes the seeds have got their own deliciousness sort of hiding within there. It just needs to be treated a different way. I want to put some in the oven, but it's all an experiment at this stage. Well, Alina, you are our resident horned melon expert. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually cooked with them. I've only eaten them fresh, so yeah. I'm actually dehydrating some seeds in the oven and see if that does anything. Sure. So what's the dish? So I have a celeriac puree. I've got... I'm going to do a butter poached bug tail. Right. I'm also considering doing a monkfish wing. There is the experiment you have to play with as a MarChef yeah. contestant. If you want to be top ten, yeah. that's the kind of stuff you've got to think of. I'm hoping that even though I'm experimenting with a lot of different things, there's enough to pull together a complete dish at the end. I'm doing a lot of experiments with these ingredients today. I guess I feel a little bit like a scientist. I've got a few different things on the go. These are not things that I would normally put together, but today with these ugly ingredients, it is about discovery. When I take the horned melon seeds out of the oven, I taste them and the acidity has intensified. Did yeah. you toast the seeds? Yeah, they're delicious. The... They're really are yum. They? I quite like them. They've got a nice citrusy flavour. They are interesting, actually. They've definitely changed in colour and texture, and I want to be able to sprinkle them over the top of my dish. I'm still thinking about using the monkfish. I'm not going to use the wings. It's not the sort of shape that I want. It's not structurally a fish that I've worked with before, so I'm just going to have a play with the tail and see how I like it, how it fries. I'm having so much fun playing with these ingredients today. Got a lot of different textures and tastes. I just hope that the judges like it. Oh, there you go. Now there you're smoking. Is. There it is. It's all about the pressure now. Three minutes to go. Make sure you get every element on the plate. Come on. Come on, guys. Oh, why does everything not want to work? It's time to plate up. Happy with the bug? Yeah, really happy. I've got a number of elements ready to go. They don't all go together, but I have to choose the right ones that complement each other in terms of texture and flavour. I've got my celeriac puree, horned melon seeds, grated Buddha's fingers, my butter poached bug, and my grated toasted morels. The monkfish, it's OK, but I don't think it adds anything to this dish, so I'm just going to leave it off. Sometimes it's about what you leave off that makes it sink. I'm hoping the judges really appreciate that. Ten seconds to go, guys. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, Four, three, two, one. 
That's it. Your time is up. Well done. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. Yeah, <sighs> Alina. Got a lot of different textures and tastes in this bowl. I just hope that the judges like it. You had a lot of fun I had in a lot this of fun. Uh, mystery box, yeah. haven't you? So what have you cooked? So I've got a butter bug, celeriac and horned melon. And you've used other stuff in there. Talk, talk us through. I dehydrated the horned melon seeds, crisped them up, dehydrated some of the Buddha's fingers zest. The meat from the bug head I put through the, the horned melon salad as well. Pickled some of the celeriac uh, stems. I deep fried some of the dried morels and grated that on the top as well. It just had a little sort of smoky char and fresh, sorry. Oh, wow, it's amazing. So tell me about how come you got three <laughs> hours and everyone else got an hour? <laughs> how do I get all those ingredients? I'm just gonna <laughs> scoop, I suppose. that got away. That is an absolute riot. It's like a firework display. Pop, 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 you know, it's just, and then boom. It's just absolutely delicious. Not only texture, but flavor plus. Like, I just love that. If you are happy cooking, that makes me even happier because eating that, that is just joyous. Wonderful. Your clarity when I came to your bench, your experimentation, your wisdom at leaving off the things that didn't work, the presence of mind to take those little seeds and roast them up to intensify their acidity to give us not only that crunchy texture but also that burst of flavour, that alone is genius enough. But then to bring it in a dish, it should be eaten with a big spoon and a sloppy smile on your face. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Keep happy. Keep enjoying. <laughs> Thank you. Well done, it's definitely a lovely little celebration and confirmation that when you do trust yourself and that you have fun, you put forward good food and it's received well.